And so while you have your Bible, go ahead and turn with me to the book of Exodus. <clears throat> I understand we just celebrated, my God, Independence Day, my God, dealing with freedom. Uh, my God, God dropped a word in my, in my spirit that I'm very familiar with and I love teaching on. I could talk about it all day long, my God, because it's so important because I understand what it is to be in bondage and I, know what, I understand now what it is to be free. I'm talking about really free and not just from physical containment, my God, but free in my mind, free in my soul, my God. So I'm super excited. But we're going to turn to the book of Exodus, my God, and going to deal with Moses as he got prepared to move the people forward into that what God has called them to be, which is free in Canaan. And so Exodus chapter 3, starting at verse 7. So I need all of you, my God, to make sure you got pen and paper. And for the few that's here with me, my God, I believe God got a word for us. My God, we can always learn. We can always stay in the posture of being students. Never get to the point where you think, my God, nothing applies to you because it might not apply to you right now, but just keep on living. You eventually have to pull this word out, my God. But I know that this word right now applies to everyone that will be looking on Facebook Live as well as on our YouTube here at Going Hard for Christ Church. And so Exodus chapter 3, starting in Verse 7, the word of God reads, Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people in Egypt. God sees everything that you and I are going through. He says, I have observed, observed the misery of my people in Egypt. Egypt in this story is a place, my God, but then we bring it up to this day and time. It means the world, my God, in our day and time. Uh, and have heard them crying out. Don't think that God don't hear you. He see you and he hear you, according to the scripture I just read. Because of their oppressors, because of their oppressors, we know we're dealing with a pharaoh here. I know about their sufferings. Verse 8 says, and I have come down, my God, to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and to bring them from the land to a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. Oh, my God. The territory of the, territory of the Canaanites and Hethites and Amorites and Perizzites and Hef Heftites and Jebusites and all the other ites, my God. So because of the Israelites cry for help. Mm, don't stop crying out to the Lord. Uh, don't stop. I don't care how much you have cried out. Keep crying out to the Lord. He said because of I mean, because the Israelites cried out for help. Help has come to me, and I have also seen help has come to them, and I have also seen the way uh, the, of, the, of the Egyptians are oppressing them. Therefore, go, I am sending you, talking to Moses, to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people. I mean, talking to Moses so that you may lead my people, uh, the Israelites, out of Egypt. I'm going to read that again back at verse number nine. So because the Israelites cry for help has come to me, and I have also seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. Verse 10 says, therefore, go, talking to Moses, I am sending you to Pharaoh so that you may lead my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Captivity, oppression. So, Father God, we thank you for the word. Mm. Speak life, hope, and light, Father God, into the people of God on today, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the privilege to do business for you inside of your kingdom today, Father God. Father God, let your kingdom fully manifest, Father God. My God, I'm so thankful, Lord, for the message I received on last Sunday uh, from a young brother out of Oklahoma City that the Spirit of God told him to put over and listen to this young man of God preach the gospel. And he was so blessed, Father God. I pray that we have uh, more, Father God, that you would speak to and have them wake up, uh, pull over, sit still, uh, don't stop scrolling, my God, as God got a word for them out there on social media today, Father God. Speak to your people, encourage your people, set your people free for real, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for going hard for Christ Church. We thank you for the people that make up the staff of going hard for Christ Church. We thank you for the sacrifice that we all have to make, Father God, to be here every Sunday, Lord, to proclaim your truth, Father God. I could not, my God, and will not attempt to do it without my people that you have blessed me with, Father God. So we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for the word that will connect with your people. We thank you for impartation and revelation, Father God, that will bring about a transformation in the minds of the people, Father God. If you can't change the mind, you will never be able to change the life, Father God. So, Father God, uh, interrupt, mm, Father God, the negative thinking, Father God. My God, interrupt, Father God, the oppressive thinking. Break the chains and the shackles up off of our mind, Father God. We're living in the land of the free. 
free in America, but we are so bound, oh my God, to the very things that you gave us dominion over. So, Father God, reverse the curse. Oh my God, Father God, we condition the mindset, Father God, so that we can dominate, so we can be fruitful, so that we can multiply as you as decreed, Father God, in the beginning of time. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for obedience in Jesus' precious name. We pray. Somebody give God a hand. My God, my God. Mm. Oh, I'm excited about the word. My God, again, I can all talk all day long about what I'm going to attempt to talk about. Don't know if I'm going to get finished. May and may not, but I'm going to do my best to make sure that I allow God to use me. My God, I want to again thank all those that's on Facebook Live and those that will be uh, joining this broadcast after we have, uh, uh, while we're on earth, my God, and those that will see this broadcast after we are off earth. I pray, my God, that this message speaks to you, that you call in to 918-622-8300. If no one is in the office at the time that you call, please leave a message, my God, and say, I need to speak to the man of God of going off for Christ church, my God. And if God has spoken to you, please, my God, engage with us throughout the service, my God. We would love to hear you. We have people on standby, ready to communicate and engage with you. If you need prayer, please let us know that. My God, whatever you need, my God, just reach out to us. We can't help you if you don't let us know you have a need. The human heart has a passion to fulfill, oh my God, a meaningful purpose. Mm -hmm. The human heart uh -huh, has a passion to fulfill a meaningful purpose, but only a few find it. Mm -hmm. That meaningful purpose. You was created with a purpose. Every one of us, God specifically pre created us with a purpose. It is very important for you and I, I and you, to discover why you were created. Because when you discover why you were created, you move from existing to living. Mm -hmm. Everyone cries for freedom. Uh-huh. As I stated, we just come off of Independence Day, celebrating the 4th of July, and I pray everyone was safe. My God, I thank God that we got to celebrate as a nation our freedom. My God, but everyone in the heart of every human being, my God, cry, we have cries for freedom. Mm. And every heart desires to be free, my God. However, most of us who cry for freedom do not understand, mm -hmm. my God, freedom, uh, do not understand freedom or the nature of liberty. It is a tragic reality that we do not understand the qualifications. Follow me now, because I'll lose you. My God, understand the qualifications uh -huh, of, of true freedom. True freedom demands, and I quote the great and late Dr. Miles Monroe. My God, true freedom demands a great responsibility. Number one, so you should write down my freedom demands responsibility. Number two, freedom, real true freedom, my God, demands accountability. Yes, Lord. So write the word accountability down. Also, true freedom demands, my God, the spirit of stewardship. Another word for stewardship, as I taught you last week, was management. My God, you have to be able to manage your freedom. Come on, somebody. And also, my God, true freedom, my God, has to do with maturity, my God, and wisdom and character. So you have true freedom demands great responsibility. Responsibility, accountability, the spirit of stewardship. My God, I'm going to tell you and teach you why stewardship matters in freedom. Maturity, wisdom, and character. Uh-huh, you need that. Freedom is more difficult. Watch this now. Freedom is more difficult than slavery because it demands more of us than slavery demands. Uh-huh. Why do I say that? Because in slavery, as I have taught many of us here at 205 South Sheridan, you are told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Everything is provided for you. You do not have to be responsible, my God, when you are oppressed or when you held in captivity or when you in slavery because someone is thinking for you. My God, but when you are released from captivity or any form of bondage, now you have to be responsible, my God. And my God, that's why it's easier to exist in slavery than it is to live in freedom. And many people choose to go back to slavery because, my God, they don't want to be responsible. Mm -hmm. It's a price that got to be paid, my God, to be free. And there's a price that got to be paid to maintain your freedom, my God. So that's why it's easier, again, to exist in chaos or in slavery than it is to be in freedom. Again, freedom, because you have to be responsible. You have to use wisdom. You have to develop character. Come on, somebody. You have to mature. You have to maintain and develop the spirit, my God, of stewardship, proper management. My God, you got to manage your freedom. Mm -hmm. and I'm not just talking about freedom from prison into society. My God, freedom. Freedom in your marriage. Freedom with your children. Freedom to come and go as you wish. Come on, somebody. You have to manage that. When you mismanage your freedom, your freedom is taken from you. Oh, my God, I would like, my God, to walk with you out of Egypt. Egypt is captivity. Egypt is 
a form of bondage, my God, into Canaan. Canaan represents in the Bible freedom, mm -hmm, where you belong. Every one of you, my God, that's listening to me and those that will come on, my God, you belong in freedom. Somebody need to write that down. You need to put that all over your house. You belong in freedom. My God, you need to tell yourself every day, all day, redundantly that I belong in freedom. I belong in freedom. I belong in freedom. Because anytime you become repetitious with quoting that, it becomes a part of your belief system. You have to understand you don't belong in chaos. You're not created to exist in confusion. You're not created to be dominated. My God, you are created to be free. But you have to manage your freedom. And when you don't, you find yourself being led by somebody else. My God, so you belong in freedom. Tell yourself that again. I belong in freedom. I'm going to do it one more time. Tell yourself out there on social media. I belong in freedom. You have to understand it's not God's intention and it's not God's will for you to be bound up to any form of habits, addictions, or whatever. My God, even those that may be in a penal institution, my God, that may look at this, my God, because we know that y'all can see this as well. You belong in freedom. You're not supposed to be locked up like an animal being told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. When we get when we become irresponsible, our freedom is taken from us, and then we are locked up and being controlled by taskmasters. But I want you to know, my God, those that's incarcerated that will listen to this sermon, you belong in freedom. So if you know that you belong in freedom and you are presently locked up in a penal institution, then you need to start making choices and decisions that's going to walk you up out of that penitentiary. So that means you got to stop getting in trouble, stop getting right up. My God, stop doing things to keep you in prison. My God, because again, it's easier for you to stay there, my God, than it is to get out. You have to purpose in your mind, I'm coming up out this prison. Like Pastor People said, I belong in freedom. You don't belong locked up like an animal. God didn't create human beings to be locked up like animals, my God. So I'm going to walk you up out of Egypt into freedom. So I'm going to point number one. Let's deal with this phrase that is familiar around here. It's the Egypt phase is what I called it. And so there's three phases, the title of the sermon, the three phases to freedom. Remember that three phases to freedom, my God. Yes, Lord. And the first one is Egypt. You got everybody, my God, has to deal with Egypt. When you are in the world, my God, when you give your life to Christ, no matter where you give your life, you could be in the Bahamas, where it's beautiful, at, my God, and give your life to Christ in the Bahamas, my God, but there's still a form of being in the world. My God, Egypt in the Bible, when we're dealing with, with Moses in the book of Exodus to keep everything in context, my God, is that they was in Egypt, which is a physical location, being controlled and dominated by a physical human being called Pharaoh, my God, who was the king at the time. And was many pharaohs in the Old Testament, my God. But you all, all of us come up out of this phase one. And all of us is dealing. There'll be some that has been brought up out of Egypt. And there's some of you that will listen to this online, my God, sermon, my God, and see that I am still in Egypt. Are you with me so far? And so this phase is a time of oppression and bondage, the Egypt phase. Israel was in bondage at the time of this writing, my God, in Egypt for over 400 years. Uh huh. They were depressed, write that down, write that word down, and they were oppressed and they were suppressed. Now, if you are listening to me right now and you are dealing with any form of depression and oppressed and suppression, my God, then that's a problem. Because God caused us, my God, to be free from depression and oppress, my oppressive spirit, oppressive mindset and suppress. Here's the thing I want you to understand. The mind controls the emotion. My God, you have the authority in you if you are in right standing with God, my God, to take authority over any spirit of depression. We all battle that. Even I find myself dealing with that. I got to keep it on the dollar. My God, who my God, because when you're raging war for God, my God, the enemy is coming after your mind. Whoever get the mind, you hear me say, get the life. So if you are in this situation right now dealing with the, you're depressed, you feel oppressed, or you're suppressed, my God, you can't flourish, you just feel like you're trapped, my God, then God has a word for you, and you would you are with the Bible we're called in Egypt right now. Our conditions, right? Listen to me. Our conditions determine our conduct until it is interrupted by an external force. <laughs> oh my God. God had to interrupt, my God, the condition that the Israelites were in. He had to have, he rose, he raised up Moses, my God, to come in, my God, to interrupt, my God, the negative force that the people of God 
was dealing with. There is certain things that you and I are facing in our lives. And it will not, you will not overcome, my God, it until you allow God to interrupt it. Until you allow God to step in, my God, and intervene or interrupt, my God. Now, how many of you, like myself, has tried to make a lot of changes within my, within my own strength and it didn't work out? My God, I tried to stay clean and sober, my God, within my own strength and it didn't work out. But until I allow God to interrupt that negative force, my God, I was always trapped in the spirit of of addiction my God and one thing about it until God come in and intervene and interrupt I like the word intervene and interrupt my God the depression the oppressed and and the suppressed my God you will stay right there in a form of Egypt and my God and when God does not intervene my God our conduct will never change Oh, my God, I'm going so I'm heavy right now. My God, unless God intervene, your actions, your behavior will never change. My God, so I want to liberate you right now out there. Quit trying to change yourself and allow God to change you. There's certain things you're dealing with that you can't change. Only God can change. And there's certain hangups and habits, my God, and situations and soul wounds, my God, and different things that happen to you, my God, that you can't fix, my God. No matter therapy can fix it, my God, God going to have to fix it. You can go to every therapist in the world, my God, until you allow God permission to come into that area of your life that you are wounded or depressed or oppressed or suppressed with, it will not change. And once God intervenes, he changes your conduct. He changes your actions, my God. He changes your heart. He changes your life lifestyle, my God. It takes God, my God, in certain areas of our life, my God, to intervene mm -hmm, and interrupt the negative forces that we are dealing with in life. So write this down up on the point number one. Let's look at number one. The first important thing, the first important point we need to see is that God always begins with the end and result. Oh, y'all need to catch that. God always begins mm -hmm. oh, with the end and result. He created your destiny, and then, we, and then he went back and, we, and created you for your destiny. Let me say that again. God created everything about you and your destiny and your destination and the plan that you have to take and the road you have to take to get to your destination, and then he went back and created you for that. That's why I don't nothing catch God by surprise because he created everything for you, and then he created you for it. So when you're going through life, <laughs> my God, and things begin to happen, God already knew because he created your destiny before he created you for your destiny. Are you with me so far? Feel familiar scripture, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans. This is God speaking. Um, Jeremiah prophesying to the nation, for I know the plans. God is telling the Israelites, no matter what you're facing, God is speaking. Y'all listen to me now. Oh, my God, no matter what you're dealing with out there on social media right now, this is what God is saying to you. Take this word and make it personal. Oh, my God, even those that sitting here up under the sound of my voice, take this word and make it personal. My God, he says, for I know the plans I have for you. The Lord is my, this is the Lord's declaration. Plans, he says, for your well-being, not for disaster. Oh, my God. To give you a future and hope. Verse 12 says in Jeremiah 29, 11, showing in verse 12 now, you will call to me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. God is listening. If you just come to him, see what I'm trying to say, and call out to him. He's listening. He said in the, in the scripture, he says, I've heard and I've seen the misery and the oppression of my people. My God, God is just waiting for you to go to him instead of going to everybody else. He said, I know the plans I got for you. It ain't one for disaster, but I, gave, I got a future for you. I got hope for you. If you just come to me, God is telling many of you out there on social media today to come. Even those that has been in church, my God, and, and this COVID, my God, and this light shutdown that we're in in the nation has disrupted your normality. My God, and you have got out of rhythm with reading. You have got out of rhythm with tithing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have got out of rhythm, my God, with sowing into the kingdom, into the spiritual realm. And God, my God, wants to bring you back my God, to you crying out to him. Some of you need to lay out in your room, lay out in your living room, begin to cry out to God. When was the last time you really cried out to God since we've been somewhat shut down in this nation? God is saying, my God, if you will call to me and come, call and come. You can't just call. You got to come. That means you got to bring the whole embodiment of you to the Lord. You bring all of you. Don't just pray to God and then yet, yet, yet you want to do what you want to do. Come to God. Call to him and then come to him and pray to me. Uh, pray to God, Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh. That's right. And he said, I will listen to you. And he said, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. He said, if you search for me and you seek me, you're going to find me. God is not hard to find. We're just not looking. 
We just not seeking. We just not searching. We just not calling. We just not coming. As the scripture just admonishes us, we always say, God know the plans he has for me. But finish out the rest of the scripture. He says, cry out to me and come to me. My God. Yeah, yeah. Seek me, he says. My God, and you'll find me. My God's goal is freedom for all people. Freedom. His goal for the children of Israelite, the Israelites was freedom. God's goal for you and I is freedom. One of the reasons why Christ came down here through 40 and two generations, my God, and died, oh my God, is for you, your freedom and my freedom. Uh, so we can have a right to commune with him. So we can have a right to have a relationship with him on our way to glory. Come on, somebody. God's ultimate goal is for you to be free. Free spiritually and also free spiritually. Uh huh. The second thing you and I need to understand. A divine promise, oh, don't miss this, sister, is more powerful than your predicament. Oh, my God, your predicament. What predicament are you in right now? But do you got a word for it? <laughs> Have you went to see what God's word says about the situation you're dealing with? Oh, my God. I, I know, my God, we can tell everybody about the predicament or the problem I'm in. But then but can you tell your neighbor? Or can you tell your pastor? Or can you tell whoever what does the word of God says about the predicament you're in? Let me read that to you again. A divine promise. Y'all, please don't miss this. It will set you free. A divine promise is more powerful than your predicament. So no matter what you're trapped in, my God, God's word is more powerful. And the promise of God is more powerful than your predicament. You want me to put some scripture on it? Write down Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 through 3. He says to Abraham, the father of faith, my God, he was in a predicament. He was dealing with a situation. And he told Abraham, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. My God, you will be a blessing. Oh, my God. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse anyone who treats you with contempt. And all the peoples on the earth will be blessed through you. And so God gave Abraham a promise. In the midst of what he was facing. Thus, the Bible out there on social media is full of promises for you and I. If you are a kingdom citizen, meaning that you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and he is Lord and Savior of your life, my God, oh my God, this Bible is full of promises that you have access at. All you got to do is access. Keys represents access, my God. All you got to do is take the key and access, my God, whatever promise you need concerning the predicament that you may be in. Is it finances? That's, that's, that's worried for finances. Is it in any form of bondage? My God, oh my God, whom the Son set free is free indeed, my God. Oh my God, is, 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 is peace escaping you? Jesus said, peace I give you, not as the world give it. My God, I give you peace that comes from heaven. See, there's all type of promises that's afforded to the believers, but you and I have to seek God. We have to cry out to the Lord. We have to do like Jeremiah 29, 11 says, my God, we got to come to the Lord. We got to bring all of us. You can't bring just a part of you, my God, because I need God to move in my situation, but I still want to do what I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. See, that's not bringing all of God. That's not coming, bringing all of yourself to God. But you got to understand promises is more powerful than your predicament, your situation, the things that you are facing right now. Get a word and put a word on it. Oh, my God, put a word on it. What does God say about the situation that you are living in right now? Oh, my God, or that you're dealing with right now. What does God has to say about you being depressed, about you, about you being oppressed, about you being suppressed right now? What does the word of God has to say about that? I just told you he don't want you to live there. He called all of us to be free. So that's what God's word has to say about that. My God, the devil is a lie. I bind the spirit of depression out there on social media. I bind being oppressed. My God, that's not where kingdom citizens are supposed to live from. We don't live from that. My God, God delivered us from that. Come on, somebody. Who am I talking to? Let me give you this note right here. Write this down right here. Whenever God delivers you from something, he also delivers you to something. Oh, yeah, yeah, write that down. Whenever God delivers you from something, if God delivered you, is delivered you from depression, oppressed and suppression, he delivered you to something. And most likely it's to him. Oh, my God, when God set you free, he set you free for him so that you may worship him so you can become an instrument that he can use to advance his kingdom. My God, it's not God's will for you to live in Egypt. It's not God's will for you to walk around depressed and naming and claiming it as a Christian, but you're depressed, oppressed and suppressed. That's out of order. It's a mockery to the king. God has set you free, but you got to walk out your freedom. I'm going to teach you how to do that right now. And the third thing, my God, God gives you a vision of freedom while you are in slavery. See, God is counterintuitive. <laughs> he does the opposite. God's going to give me a vision of freedom and I'm in captivity. 
I'm oppressed, I'm depressed, I'm suppressed, and God is talking to me and showing me stuff about freedom. See, we want to say, God, you need to help me right here. Why are you giving me a vision of what I'm going to be five years from now? Oh, my God, as I told you, my God, God starts, my God, he created you, my God, created your destiny, then created you for your destiny. He know the plans that he got for you, my God. So don't let your predicament tell you that that's all, that's, that's my plot in life. That's all I got coming. God sees your predicament, but God also knows five years from now, three months from now, three days from now, oh, my God, three hours from now, my God, that your predicament can change. Don't you know that God has the power? to change your predicament in a matter of seconds in the blink of an eye you can go from being in prison to being in the palace who am i talking to out there on social media my god who am i got quit limiting limiting god <laughs> quit binding god's hands my god quit letting your my god predicament speak louder than the promises of god what did god say about your situation what did god say to who you were quit letting people tell you that you was this and this that my god that might have been some of the things you done but that's not who you are that's what you're done my god who do god say that you you are. What did the word of God and the promises of the word, my God, say about you? My God, the Bible said that you, after, are fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, my God, you was created in God's image. He said he knew you, my God, when you was being formed in your mama's womb. My God. Oh, my God, there's so many beautiful promises in the word of God. Oh, my God, that speaks to the people out there, my God. And I want you to begin to embrace, begin to adopt, begin to accept who God says you are. Quit letting your predicament speak louder than the promises of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God would give you a vision of freedom while you in slavery. <laughs> oh my God, God will show you a glimpse of your future while you're in captivity. God will give you a glimpse, my God, of what it's going to be, my God, if you stay planted, my God, if you stay hungry, if you stay thirsty, my God, if you seek first the kingdom, if you cry out to him, if you accept the plans that he has for you, he will show you in the midst of, of your predicament, in the midst of your captivity, in the midst of your slavery, my God, he will show you your future. Oh my God, that's just like God. Why did he do that? Because he's trying to give you hope. <laughs> He's trying to encourage you in the midst of your oppression. He's trying to encourage you in the midst of your depression. He's trying to encourage you in the midst of your predicament. So God will give you a glimpse of what it's going to be like. But you got to, you can't faint. That's why he say, my God, who my God, in due season you'll reap if you faint not. I want to encourage you to stay strong. I want to encourage you to stay planted. I want to encourage you to keep seeking. I want to encourage you to keep knocking, my God. Who my God, God has then showed y'all something. Some of y'all are telling yourself, who my God, you just showed me that God, but look at my predicament. Look at my situation. Again, quit letting your predicament. And your situation speak louder than the promises. God will show you freedom in the midst of slavery. God will tell you, my God, according to the promises, you are free. The Bible says whom the son set free, pastor, is free indeed. You could be a drug addict, a junkie, or whatever you is out there, my God. And the Bible has already promised you and I that you are free. See, that's, see, he already promised you, my God, you're just choosing not to walk in your freedom, but you are already free. Why? Because he paid the price for you over 2,000 years ago. So you just got to walk into your freedom. Like Moses is getting ready to walk the children of Israel up out of Egypt. Won't you just walk in your freedom? You're already free. You're just choosing not to be free. Freedom is a choice. Choose to be free. Oh, my God. Jesus said, whom the Son set free is free indeed. So you're in captivity, but you're free. Uh, you're in financial uh, poverty, but you're already set free and delivered financially. All you got to do is accept it and begin to manage and rule <laughs> and subdue and <laughs> be fruitful and multiply. It's all kind of principles that God has given you, my God, concerning financial management. Mm -hmm. And so, again, as I redundantly have said, God gives you vision of your freedom while you are enslaving, while you're at the bottom of he will show you the top. God always deal with the future. That's why you cannot gauge your life by what you have been through and what you are doing right now. Quit counting yourself out. I'm talking through the spirit of the living God. Quit gauging who you are and what your life will turn out to be by your predicament and what you're dealing with. That is a slave and that's an Egypt mentality. God knows your future. I am. My God, and many out there that know me, my God, never thought that I would be doing the things that God has me doing. My God, if I would have looked at my predicament, if I would have stayed, my God, trapped in that mentality that I was once in, I would not be the person that God has ordained me to be. Ah, what you are seeing right now on these cameras, my God, was already predestined in my future, my God. I just had to work it out, my God. I had to come through the gangs, the drugs, and so far, my God, to get to where I'm at because God had a plan for me. And just like God has a plan for me, and I'm fulfilling my plan, God has a plan for you. So quit letting your predicament, quit letting people tell you that you're never going to amount or nothing, my God, and quit telling yourself, my God, this is my plot in life, my God, quit speaking condemnation to yourself, quit condemning your future, my God, speak hope 
speak life into your future, my God. Who am I talking to out there, my God? Who understand that if God did it for pastor, he going to do it for you, my God. If God can take a mess and turn it into a message, he want to do it for you, my God. God is no respect to a person, my God. What he done for Jakari, he going to do for you. What he done for Alvin, he'll do for you. What he done for Lawrence, he'll do for you. What he done for April, he'll do for you. But will you come? When you come, will you come bring all of yourself to him? Will you seek him, my God? Would you allow him to put his hands on you? Will you allow him to mold you? Would you allow God, my God, to show you glimpse of your future and then walk you and move you towards your future, my God? It's about acceptance. You have to accept, my God, your future, my God, and quit talking yourself up out of your future. Quit letting the spirit of fear dominate you. Who, my God, quit letting the spirit of low self-esteem, my God, rob you. <laughs> quit telling yourself you don't look the part. Quit telling yourself you're not educated enough. My God, I'm guilty of that myself. My God, I feel so unqualified, and that's a good place to be in because it ain't me, it's God. Who am I talking to out there? It's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by his spirit out there. And so you got to understand, you got a future. And God will speak to you in your, your, your oppressive state right now. And he will speak hope. He will speak life. He will speak freedom. He will speak, ah, he will show you that you're a millionaire while you flat broke. But you won't believe it. My God, because you're looking at your predicament. You won't accept what God is trying to show you. Your, your financial freedom is in your future. But you're looking at your predicament of being broke, robbing Peter to pay Paul, and so you won't even stretch your faith <laughs> towards your future. He didn't give you a glimpse. My God, this spoke to somebody. I felt that with Pastor. He didn't already showed you a glimpse that you're coming up out of financial poverty, that you got he got a plan for you, my God. But you keep talking yourself out of it, my God. You're like, that must be something for somebody else. That ain't for me. I've been struggling so long. My God, I've been on welfare for so long. I've been on the state for so long, my God. This is all I got. It's generational, my God. My grandma, 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 grandma was on welfare, and now I'm on welfare, my God. I know God showed me that, but I don't believe it because I look at my legacy, my, 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 my past generation, all them has been on welfare. The devil is a lie. The devil is a lie, my God. God has plans for you out there, my God. Oh, my God, that's an Egypt mentality. That's a world's mentality. And can I, but as I slow down, can I tell you this? And most of the people that I'm preaching to right now, Go to church every Sunday and call themselves Christians. That's how they think. Oh, that set me up for point number two. Most of us that the Spirit of God is talking to and everything that I have said really is applicable and applies to those that profess to be Christians. God has showed you some stuff, and yet you talk yourself out of it. God has showed you that you are better than what you are, but you keep telling yourself you're not qualified. Mm. That's for somebody else. My God, God has showed you, my God, God has spoke to you about your son. Who I'm talking to myself. God has spoke to you about your children and things keep getting worse so you don't believe what God has said. Oh, my God, the Bible says, my God, in the book of Acts, my God, if you confess God with your, is your Lord and Savior, he says, you shall be saved and your household. Whole household salvation, my God. And because, my God, you saved and your wife may be saved and your daughter may be saved, but your son is not acting right, so you have given up. No, the Bible says that's a promise. If I accept Christ... As my personal Lord and Savior, he said, I have a promise that my whole household shall be saved. And so sometimes as I teach my family, things get worse before they get better. Things will get worse, <laughs> thank you, Naila, before they get better. Come on, somebody. And so therefore, keep on believing. Keep on hoping. My God, don't let your natural eyes, my God, deceive you. Don't let your ears deceive you. Come on, somebody. What does God say about you? That's why you got to know your purpose, my God. That's why you got to believe the plans that God has for you, my God. You got to tell yourself God wants me free. And freedom ain't got nothing to do with you being in the physical world. It got to do with your mental condition. It got to do with your, your self-esteem, my God, your image of yourself. All that matters, my God. If you've been listening to Minister Lanny, he's been talking about all that stuff, my God. Somebody give God a hand out there, my God. Woo, Jesus. Mm. Yes, Lord. Let's go to phase number two, my God. After God deliver you and I out of Egypt, after God bring you out of the world, because see, many of us, we got saved out of the world. I got saved in prison, and many of you got saved in church. Some of you got saved at some, I think it's KAA camps and all these different camps that I know nothing about because I didn't grow up in church. My God, wherever you got saved that you got saved out of the world, God delivered you from the world to him, okay? But after God delivered you, just like Jesus, Jesus got baptized, my God, and the Spirit descended upon him in the book of Luke, I believe that was. And the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord, Pastor, led him into the wilderness, Right after he is, you know what I'm saying, get saved and fast and pray and all that stuff, he gets led into the wilderness. Right? All right? So the second phase on the road to freedom, we dealt with Egypt, captivity, bondage, depression. If you're living there, thank you, Holy Ghost, if you're living in any form of captivity, in any area of your life, that's not God's best for you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. If you are a professing believer and you have 
Ask God to forgive you for your sins. You have made him Lord and Savior over your life. It is not God's intent nor is it his will that you be in any form of bondage or captivity in any area of your life. Any area. You got to make yourself open and say, Holy Ghost, have your way in my life. Because it's not, it's undermining the power of God when we are free in one area and we refuse to get free in another area. And many Christians, my God, are free in only certain parts of their life. And God wants you free in every area of your life. And so in order to help you get free in every area of your life, because watch this, because when we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, our spirit comes alive. Now God got to work on our transformation. <laughs> oh, my God. So he got to send us somewhere. My God, we can put his hands on us. Watch this now. My God, the, the second phase on the road to freedom begins with the Red Sea. Yeah, yeah, he delivered them, but they had to come to a Red Sea. Yeah, yeah, just on the other red side of the Red Sea, my God, is something that's real plushed out. <laughs> there's something, my God, that we all are, uh, aspire to get to, and that's real freedom. Now watch this. Mm. After being delivered, the Spirit of the Lord must, must allow us to go to the wilderness. The Spirit of the Lord led Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After God saved you, he has to begin to form you. <laughs> he has to begin to renovate you and I. Are you with me so far? Oh, my God. And so he had to begin to prune you and I. He had to begin to cut on you and I. He had to drop you and I in the fire. He had to drop you and I in the lion's den. Oh, my God. He has to allow us to be lied on, talked about, misunderstood, and all that is molding and shaping us and getting us ready for the last phase. But before I get there, I want you to understand, you have to embrace your wilderness experience because it's preparation for where you're going. Who am I talking to out there? My God. Wilderness represents testing and trials and God training you how to be responsible. <laughs> Who testing trials and God training you and I how to be responsible. It is impossible, y'all, to walk into freedom without shouldering ah, its responsibility. Free, true freedom demands that you and I be responsible. I've always said it, bringing it down to the simplest form. When you are not responsible with your freedom, your freedom is taken from you. As I've always said when I teach the marriage couples here going off of Christ Church, I got my wedding ring on right there. And I can walk up out the house if I forget my marriage, my, my wedding ring, my God, because I run up out the house or whatever, my God. And my wife is not going to be like, why you ain't got your ring on? Why you ain't doing this and that? Why you ain't doing that? Only reason why she would say that is because if I have taken off my marriage ring, my marriage, my, my wedding ring, my God, and went out there and have violated the covenant of marriage by way of committing, I'm teaching you, adultery. Now, the freedom that I had when leave, run up out the house and forget my, my wedding ring, my God, and I run up out the house and I do what I do, my God, and my wife ain't tripping because I have never given her reason to question, my God, my loyalty. But the minute I break my vow, and the minute, my God, I allow some inappropriateness to come into my marriage, my God, to make my wife question my loyalty and my, and my holiness to her, now when I run out the house without my ring on now, she wondering why you ain't got your ring on? Why are you always running up at this house with your ring off your finger? You're starting to leave your ring off your hand a whole lot. Why all of a sudden, I'm going somewhere, I know where I'm at in my thoughts, why all of a sudden now, this is such an issue? Because my wife knows that I have violated the covenant and allowed some form of impurity, my God, into my marriage. And now, I, now she don't trust me. Now the freedom that I had, I no longer have. Because when she allowed me, and my God, it didn't trip with me with my ring being off at times. My God, who my God, because I violated that. Now, the freedom that I had, now, now I don't have no more. See, I'm trying to make it as simple as you can understand. Why do I say shoulder responsibility? Because to be, to be in real freedom, there's a level of responsibility. True freedom demands responsibility. As I've taught y'all, when you mismanage your freedom, your freedom is taken from you. When you violate your covenant, my God, the freedom to come and go as you please. Some of us, my God, soon we leave the house to go to McDonald's, you have to text her and let her know I'm at McDonald's in the drive through ordering a Big Mac, my God. And I mean, when you get the Big Mac, now you gotta say I'm leaving now, my God, headed back to you. And when you pull up in the driveway, you got to let them know I'm outside in the driveway, and then when you get out the car, you got to go in the door and say, honey, I'm home. 
because you violated the freedom that you had to come and go as you please when you broke covenant. Now, if you don't understand the responsibility of freedom right there, I don't know what's going to help you. Freedom always comes at a price. Real freedom always comes, my God, at a cost. You have to pay, my God, ooh, a cost to be free. And when you mismanage that, it's taken from you. Oh, my God. It is impossible, as I stated, to walk into freedom without shouldering its responsibility. Oh, my God. It is also important to understand that many of us have been conditioned by our former oppression, which keeps us from moving forward in the things of God. Many of us have been uh, 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 conditioned by our former oppression. The children of Israel to come back to content, context. My God, they were delivered from Egypt, but they couldn't. But Egypt wasn't out of them. They was physically out from up under Pharaoh, but their mind kept going back to Egypt. My God, my God, we used to hearing that, my God, but I need us to really understand what the Spirit of God is saying. It's a reason why we are hearing this again out there going off of Christ, because many of us is free. We don't have no physical Pharaoh over us, but we got other Pharaohs, like lust, like lying, like cheating, like financial debt, depression, backbiting, jealousy, laziness, inconsistency. Them is Pharaohs today. You know, we don't have a physical man telling us what to do, my God, but we have other uh, uh, devices, little, little, little schism and isms, my God, controlling us, my God. But they couldn't move forward. The, the, the Israelites couldn't move forward because their condition of being oppressed for so long, my God, was never out of them. That's why God got to take you and I to the wilderness, my God, to recondition you and I, to transform our mind. Let me read that to you again, my God. Oh, my God. Mm. It is also important to understand that many of us has been conditioned, have been conditioned, conditioned, my God, by our former oppression. What is your former oppression right now? Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Type it in there. It may be lust. It may be fear. It may be depression. It may be suppression. It may be laziness. It may be fool. It may be gluttony. I don't know. My God. Oh, my God. But when you name it, my God, you standing on it. My God. And so what is, my God, your oppressor today? What is, my God, your taskmaster? Who and what is your pharaoh at this time of me preaching this sermon right now? And that thing, my God, that is oppressing you is keeping you in the condition that you are in. You are delivered, but you are still oppressed. That is a bad place to be in as believers when we, Jesus has given his life. He has shed his blood so that you and I can be free. But we are still depressed. We are still oppressed. We are still in captivity, though we are free from the bondage of sin. But yet sin is still our taskmaster. Something is wrong. That's because we have been conditioned by our oppression. Oh, that's heavy out there. I hope they communicate. Is anybody out there communicating, y'all? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And your oppressor, watch this, your oppressor is keeping you from moving forward. So, Pastor, so when Jeremiah said, I know the plans I have for you, I, I know that you have a future, I know that you have hope, I got a special purpose for you, my God, you don't believe that because your oppressor speaks louder. Your predicament speaks louder than the plans of God. People's voice speak, don't you know your oppressor could be that man you sleeping with? I'm going to keep it on a dollar because he keep telling you that you ain't nothing, that you won't be nothing, ain't nobody going to ever want you. And he does that, my God, to be little you, my God, because he know if you leave his butt, my God, he ain't get, mm, I can't get nobody to say no way. Let me watch myself, my God. And so be careful, my God. And vice versa. Some of you men, your oppressor, you laying up beside him. T.D. Jake said you can't cast out the devil you sleeping with. Who am I talking to out there, my God? You better be careful because some of those that's closest to you can be your oppressors and they need you to stay in Egypt because as long as you stay in Egypt they get to be uh, they get to be irresponsible they get to be unproductive they get to be unfruitful my God but the minute you decide to accept your plan that God has for you to accept your purpose that God has for you now they got to get ghosts I can't get nobody to say nothing right there oh my God I want you to know that some of the people you're trying to bring into freedom they got to die in the wilderness because they can't go who am I talking to right there you're trying to bring people into the promised land they can't go they're supposed to die in the wilderness oh my God who am I talking you have to show your oppressors. Don't let your oppressors speak louder. Oh, my God, in your future. My God. And many of us cannot move forward and possess the land. Possess the land. Possess the land. Because we are being conditioned for, 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 for poverty. We are being conditioned and controlled, my God, by the oppressor. Even though we are sanctified, we say, we are born again believers, we say, we read our Bible, we say, but at the end of the day, when anytime that oppressor, look at me, y'all, wave the towel, he controls what you do, when you do it, how you do it. That's not being free. As I stated, we say that we are free, but are we really free? 
Anything that controls you, Paul says in the book of Romans, all down through chapter 6, 7, and 8, anything that is mastering you is your God. Anything that you cannot do without, anybody that you cannot do without is your God. Or no matter how much we stretch our hands, according to the word, my God, whatever is mastering you, mastering, think about mastering that has dominance. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. My former life used to dominate me. When it came calling, I left. I sacrificed and I don't want to go there. I sacrificed my family, my kids and everything, my God, for my, for my addiction, my God, because it was mastering me. But once I surrendered, when my God delivered you from something, he delivered you to something. Once I surrendered to God, the rest of it is history, my God. But anything that's mastering you, let me make it plain. Let me make it elementary, my God. Anything that's mastering you, anything that's calling you, my God, anything that will make you put your Bible down, anything that will make you walk away from your family, anything that'll make you quit, my God is mastering you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Again, our, our oppressor is, uh, is conditioning our mind. Mm -hmm. We can't move forward because of fear, because of low self-esteem, because we really don't trust God like we say we do. Some of us, what's keeping us from moving forward is a lack of trust. Thank you, Holy Ghost. How can we say we got faith in God when we don't trust God? Faith and trust go hand in hand. Many of us, my God, uh, will watch this sermon and you got on late, but you have not pushed that button to give because you're telling yourself, I got to hold on to what I got because I don't know what my job going to be like this week. So therefore, I rob God predicament. I'm so used to not having enough. And so the little I got, I got to hold on to it. See, that's the condition of a slave mentality. And so you would rather sacrifice your future my God, who my God for thirty dollars or forty dollars <laughs> that you supposed to give God? Lord have mercy. I'm gonna leave that alone. Mm -hmm. God took them to the wilderness. Uh huh. God took them to the wilderness to get to get Egypt out of them first. Remember, Egypt represents testing trials and being responsible. This shows us that position. Write this down. Position doesn't guarantee disposition. They was free positionally. But they weren't free mentally. Uh, you and I are free positionally, spiritually, bringing up that time. But we're not free in our mind. That's powerful right there. My God. Freedom starts in the mind. If you are not in freedom in your mind, you are not free. We just celebrated Independence Day. We just shouted. We just popped firecracker, we just barbecued, and we talked about I'm free. Are you? After all of the festivities and after everybody laid, left the home and left the environment you was at, when you, how many pills do you have to take to deal with depression? And I'm not being insensitive. I'm trying to help you. Real freedom is in the mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that one. That's why I'm kind of just, mm, say line. Let me give you a definition of disposition. It translates to your behavior. Whoever controls the mind controls the life, and the mind controls the behavior. So if you are a professing believer, but yet your behavior is still in Egypt, then you're not free. If you're still bound up and struggling to the very things that Christ set you and I free from, then you're not free. I just want to help you understand what real freedom is really about. Because the freedom that we think we have, we really don't got. Because until I get free in my mind, I'm not free. And as I stated, freedom, I mean, freedom in the mind controls your actions. So if I find myself being mastered, I'm back to this, being controlled, being dominated by some oppressor, then I'm not free. Quit telling yourself that you're free when you're not free. See, you got, like I told y'all on Father's Day, people, my God, who, think, who you think you are, mm -hmm, who you really are, and who you want others to think you are. Which one are you? Who you think you are, who you want others to think you are, and who you really are. It's okay, we all are working this thing out. We all got areas in our lives, my God, that we need God to intervene. We need God to disrupt, my God, that negative force that's going on in our life. All of us got it, including the pastor. See what I'm trying to say? My God, but at the end of the day, my God, if your mind is dominated, you're not free. Because you could be battling something, that don't mean you're not free. See what I'm trying to say? But if you are dominated, my God, oh my God, by many oppressors, plural, then you're not free. I don't care how much you jump and shout. Can I help you understand something? Jumping don't make you free. Shouting don't make you free. Clapping don't make you free. Coming to church don't make you free. Application of the word what makes you free. Accepting your freedom what makes you free. 
applying the promises of God in your life, that's what makes you free. That's why I say, my God, just because you're a Christian don't mean that you're free. Oh, my God. So I want you free today. Mm. And for those that's online that would hear this, my God, and you're not a Christian, my God, you will never be free. You will always be dominated by the curves of this world. You will always be dominated by the culture of this world, my God, because true freedom can only be found, thank you, Holy Ghost, in Christ and through Christ. Period. Oh, my God. I don't care how much money you got. I don't care what kind of car you drive. I don't care what side of town you live on. My God. You can have all that stuff and you are still not free because many of us got all that. We got the $200,000 a year job, my God, but we depressed. And we take a whole lot of pills just to get through the day. You got to have 18, my God, nobody get offended. You got to have 18 cups of coffee just to get started. You can't just wake up and say, Lord, I thank you that I'm alive today. You got to have 40 cups of coffee just to start your day. Uh, coffee is your master. I know somebody out there laughing at me right now. Amen. Oh, my God, the wilderness experience is characterized by God's miraculous provision. When they was in the wilderness, go back to context of the scripture, my God, God provided everything for them. When they was in Egypt, my God, Pharaoh, my God, provided everything for them, just like prison. You know what I'm trying to say? You told what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. They give you three meals a day, give you a change of clothes, my God. When your boots wear out, they give you a new set of boots, my God, and all that. If you get sick, they let you go to the doctor for free. My God, come on, somebody on somebody else's tax money, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is provided for you. But now, my God, God has delivered them from Egypt. God has delivered them from Pharaoh, and now God is trying to take them vertical. That's why God allowed, my God, the spiritual heavenly food to come down called manna, my God, because God was trying to bring them back vertical. And he allowed water to come up out of rock because God was trying to recondition condition their mind and bring them back to him. That's what God is trying to do to all of us right now. All of us at one point in time, are we either coming out of Egypt or are we going back to Egypt, I mean to, to the wilderness, because God is always working on us. But God is trying to bring some of us back vertical, my God, because we're so used to everything horizontal. We're so used to everything being given to us, my God, and God is trying to provide for you and I. Oh, my God, God is trying to bring us back vertical. That's why he fed with, with heavenly food from heaven, called water to come out of a rock in the midst of a desert. Think about that. Water gushed out of a rock in the midst of a desert. God was trying to prove who he was to his children. Oh, God got you and I in some tight situations because God's trying to prove who he is to you and I. You need your wilderness experiences, my God. Oh, my God, everything is provided for you by God when you're in the wilderness because God is working with you. He's trying to show you I can take care of you. He's trying to show you I got the plans for you, my God. God will allow things to happen, my God. It seems like when you first get saved, everything you pray for, it seems like it happened. Who, my God, God does it for you, my God, because it's in the wilderness where God knows we tender because we're just not coming out the world, my God. He know our spirits are saved, but now our lives got to be transformed. So God is strategically working with us, my God. He sends certain trials, pastors. He sends certain testings, my God. He sends certain provision, my God, because he's trying to build your belief system in him, my God, because many of us believe in the, in the job that we go to, my God, in Egypt. We believe in our, in our husband, my God, and our, our, the money that he make, my God. We have our faith in every other thing but God, and so God is trying to bring us, now that we're in the wilderness, my God, and we delivered from Egypt, my God, now he's trying to bring us to a point where we believe in him, where we look to him for our strength, where we look to him for our guidance. We look for him, my God, for all of our needs to be met, and he said, if you seek first the kingdom, my God, and of God and all of his righteousness, he will provide all these things for you. So in the wilderness, God will provide provision for you. God will meet your needs. But God is doing that because he's trying to prove himself to you. Is it you in the midst of a predicament right now? Are you in the midst of a situation because you've been praying and asking God to show up and God got you in the wilderness right now because he's trying to show up and answer your prayer for you? That you pray? You said, God, show me. You said, God, if you real, reveal this to me. God, if you able, do this for me. My God, and God got you in a situation because he's trying to reveal to you that he can answer your prayers. My God, also, he's trying to mold you. He's trying to shape you while you're in the midst of the wilderness. It is during our early years of faith in the wilderness that we live on God's miraculous manner. He does everything during that period without any contribution on our part. God got you when you're in the wilderness. All you got to do is walk by faith and not by sight. All you got to do is trust God, lean on God. My God, God is working with you. My God, he delivered you from Egypt. Now you're in the wilderness. Wilderness means preparation. Wilderness means testing. My God, God want to see, my God, because right now, my God, he's giving you everything. For some of us right now, if God begin to withhold, would you still serve him? Mm. If you walk this to your job tomorrow and got laid off, Will you still give God the glory? 
See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, if, if she broke your heart and said, uh, I wanted to marry you, but I decided I'm not going to marry you, will you still say you're God and you're God all by yourself? See, it's all about testing my God. Oh, my God, it's easy to serve God when everything's going good. But when God starts withholding, when God starts closing up the heavens, when God starts working on you because he's trying to build you, my God, when he's not answering your prayers, my God, when he's quiet, my God, when he's watching to see if you're going to keep on reading, if you're going to keep on praying, if you're going to keep on serving, if you're going to keep on coming up, my God, oh, my God, and doing what God has asked you to do. He's watching, my God, to see if you're going to remain faithful, my God, when he withhold. It's easy to keep going hard when he's giving you everything. What you going to do when he withhold? When he take his hands up off of you? My God, allow you to go through some things. <laughs> when he ain't got you sheltered like a mama protecting a baby. When he opened you up and allowed the devil to, 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 to nibble at you and get at you, my God. He said, my God, he can't kill you, my God, but I'm going to allow him to mess with you. I'm going to allow him to buff at you. I'm going to allow him to disrupt some things in your life. My God, I'm going to allow him to cause some confusion. I'm going to allow him to allow a little sickness in your body. I'm going to allow him to attack your finance. I'm going to allow a little hell in your marriage and all that. Don't trip, my God, I got you. I want to see if you're going to keep going hard. See, it's testing. It's testing. It's preparation. Because God got to get you ready. From the Egypt to the wilderness, preparation. Oh, my God. But God's trying to get that Egypt mentality out of you. He's trying to get that worldly mentality out of you. Let me bring it up, my God. He's trying to get that first Adam out of you and get you to the second Adam. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. He got his hands on you, my God. Mm. It's, doing the, it's doing the wilderness experience, my God, where God is building our faith. Write that down. And God is building our trust. In the wilderness, even though the children of Israel continually cursed God, watch this now, and complained and murmured, and they said they wanted to go back to Egypt. See, the first signs of opposition, the first sign of trouble, the first thing we want to do is go back to Egypt, go back to bondage, go back to the familiar, go back to what's convenient, go back to what's comfortable. My God, many people tell you it's easier for me to live inside a physical prison because in a physical prison, I don't have to be responsible. Everything is provided for me. Look at the mentality of that. Well, you can say that's a shame. Well, 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 now be careful now. Be careful now to say that's a shame because a person that's getting out of prison say it's easy for me to stay in prison. I've heard somebody has personally told me that I do better. I was going to court when they sentenced me to 13 years of prison. And it was a guy that went before me, Dominique and Alvin, and the judge gave him 60 years. And this is what he said. And I respect him to the fullest. This is his exact words. This was back in 1998, February the 10th, when I got sentenced to 13 years in the Portland Correction. And a guy went before me. I forgot his name. White man. My God. Oh, my God. He, the judge said, I now sentence you. He had just got out of prison. Probably went out of prison three weeks. And the judge said, I now, he committed a crime. The judge said, I give you 60 years. And this is what he said. Now, watch this now. Listen to this, Pastor. He said, Your Honor, you gave it to the right one. And the, 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 the judge said, what you mean you, I gave it to the right one? He said, because I do better when I'm in prison than when I'm in society. Least I know, my God. And he, the, watch this now. He said, least I know that everything is going to be provided for me. He also said this. He said, I'm a better Christian when I'm in prison than I am in society. That is the honest to God truth. And you know what? I respect him to the fullest because he know his heart. He know his predicament. He know his situation. It sounds ludicrous. It sounds crazy. But he said you gave it to the right one. Because I do better when I'm incarcerated and I'm a better Christian when I'm in prison. But you know what they're saying is? It goes back to what I said, Minister April. Because in freedom, you have to be responsible. It's less responsibility when I'm in captivity. Because everything, I don't have to worry about gas, wallet, electric, I don't have to worry about getting there. The only job I got to go to is, is out there on the queue. I may work in the kitchen. I may be responsible for sweeping and cleaning the dorms or something like that, something real, real light. But in society, my God, it's too much hustle and bustle, too much going on, it's too much pressure. And when you done done a lot of time, my God, it's easier to stay locked up. The same thing with the children of Israel. They was in bondage for 400 and some years. And when God set them free, they kept wanting to go back. Every time they faced any trial, any testing, any temptation, the first thing they say it is I want to go back and many of us as Christians my God before we put our finger on my man many of us as soon as we face any opposition my God we first thing we do is we revert back we don't say we want to go back we go back we leave God go out in the world and then when we get too hard we want to come back to church and that's a problem that's why we're not transforming my God because we quit in the midst of testing we quit in the midst of purging we quit in the midst of God's molding and shaping us in the first sign of trouble the first sign of testing the first signs of temptation my God we quit on God mm. and we do just like my man it says it's easy for me to live in chaos 
freedom. I mean, a bondage, my God, than it is to be in freedom. Let me move forward. Exodus 14, 10 through 14, and I'm almost through. Exodus chapter 14, verses, verses, uh, chapter 14, 10 to 14. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians coming after them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord for help. They said to Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? Because they was faced with some problems and a little testing, April, and a little inconvenience. And they were so used to getting water when they wanted water because water wasn't coming in this plenty of food, my God, because they weren't eating the food that furrows were. See, you can get used to prison food. <laughs> uh, you can get used to that little prison stuff. And I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> come on, somebody, because stuff wasn't happening, keep in mind conditioning, because things weren't, weren't happening the way they was used to it happening. They asked Moses, is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you has taken us a way to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? So they was okay with being told what to do. Watch this. Isn't this what we told you in Egypt? Let me finish. Leave us alone. Listen, y'all. Listen to my sense of God's people. And we the same way? Leave us alone, pastor. As long as I come to church, I'm fine. Don't tell me to stop doing that. Don't tell me I got to clean my life up. Don't tell me I got a lifestyle still matter. Leave me alone. Leave me alone, pastor. Don't disrupt, my God, the oppression. Don't disrupt the depression. I'm comfortable there. At least I know how to manage that depression. At least I know how to manage, my God, this chaos that I'm living in. It's easier for me. I'm happy living in chaos. I'm happy living in slavery. Leave me alone, pastor. I ain't going to that church. You preach too real. The truth hurt. It's too much conviction over there. Leave me alone. Oh, I'm making it with you. Understand? We saying the same thing they saying. Leave us alone so that we may serve. Leave me alone, Pastor. I like uh, operating in, in chaos. I like being irresponsible. I like being late. I like a dirty house, a dirty car. I like looking crazy. Come on, leave me alone. I like that. That's all I know. Don't ask me to clean up my life and function like a queen and a king that God says I'm supposed to function like. Don't ask me, to, my God, to be free financially. I like robbing Peter to pay Paul. Don't ask me to be a giver, my God. I like struggling. Oh, my God. Yeah, we got the same mindset as they got. Ain't nothing different 3,000 years later. You are telling me as a pastor, leave me alone. Oh, my God, that I may serve the Egyptian. Oh, that I may serve oppression. That I may serve captivity. That I may serve mediocrity. That I may serve low self-esteem. That I may serve ungodliness. That I may serve unholiness. That I may be a hypocrite. Leave me alone. Let me serve my oppressors. Oh, somebody talked to me. I wish we was in church. My God, I may preach this next Sunday. It would have been better for us, they said, to serve the Egyptian. We said it may be better for us to serve the oppressor. They said it's better for us to serve the Egyptian, the people that beat them, the people that starved them to death, the people that, that raped their wives and all that, raped their kids and all that type of stuff. It's better that we serve them. I'm trying to make you feel it. Oh, my God, this is the mindset. That's why I'm telling you freedom is a state of mind. Oh, my God, let me serve these people. My God, at least they treated us good. How can they treat you good when they were starving you to death and whipping you with whips, my God, and raping your children and snatching your wives away from you? And you say you want to serve them. Oh, my God, the first thing we do, bring it up to our time. My wife always say, make it where I understand it. The first thing we want to do, my God, when we first opposition is run back to the very thing that ran us to the church. We run back to the pills. We run back to the weed. We run back to the sex. We run back to the canab. And my God, the very thing, my God, that you said you was tired of and you ran to the church and said, Lord, what must I do to be served? And the first sign of opposition, you run right back to the very thing that ran you to the church. Oh, it's a form of insanity. We ain't no different than them. 3,000 years later, Minister Jakari. Yes, Lord, my God, we want to serve them in Egypt and then die in the wilderness uh, rather than die in the wilderness. We want to serve them in Egypt, Pastor, serve the Egyptians, oh, my God, than to die in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But Moses said to the people, don't be afraid, stand firm. If the Spirit of God has said all that to you, I want you to understand if that's your condition, stand firm. Don't quit, my God, and see the salvation. That means the deliverance. Let me move. That, that he will accomplish for you today. God is able. Mm. 
Yes, Lord. For the gypsies you see today, you'll never see again tomorrow. Some of the, uh, some of the predicaments and situations you're dealing with today, if you stand firm and you stand still, oh, uh, my God, and you give God an opportunity to work and you give God room to work in your mind, you won't see them enemies today. My God, how you feeling right now? If you keep rolling, and you keep standing for God, you won't feel like that. My God, the pain that you got, the church hurt that you say you have and so forth, my God, just stand still. God going to heal that too. That's another thing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I hear so much about church hurt. Church hurt. And I'm going to be real careful. But that area right there too is an oppressor. Because there's many people right now that I know, that I communicate with, my God, that's out of church, don't believe in nothing that's going on with the church because you was hurt in church. You are in oppression. That condition is, 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 is controlling your future. That condition, that mindset, my God, that they hurt me in church. Uh, the pastor was this, or the first lady did this, or the leaders did that, my God. Oh, my God. And so now I don't want to have nothing to do with church, my God. And so that has become your condition. That has become your mindset. But you don't understand, my God. You may think, but you are oppressed. You are in the condition of unfruitfulness, unproductivity. Oh, my God, you're unproductive. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My God, because you are allowing a condition that something happened to you when you were 13 years old. Even if it happened last week. You got to get free. If church hurt is dominating your present, then you're not free. I don't care how much Bible you quote. I don't care how much good you preach. You're not free if you're allowing church hurt to dominate your future and rob you from being involved with the body. Many of you out there, my God, let me speak because I'm about to. Many of you out there, my God, uh, God, God saved you and you are saved, but you have been wounded. And I'm not saying, my God, what you have went through is not apical. My God, people have hurt you. People have mishandled you. People have dropped you. My God, but at the end of the day, so you have told yourself, I'm going to sit down. I ain't never doing nothing again. I ain't never going back to church again. But there's some church here in Tulsa that needs your gifts. There's somebody that's sitting in these churches needs your purpose. There's somebody, my God, who, my God, is waiting on you to get back into position. God is speaking, Lord. Who, my God, they're waiting for you to come to your senses. They are ready for you to return back to the Zion. Huh? They are ready for the glory of the Lord to hit your life again because somebody needs you. As we teach over here, who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same? Quit letting your conditions keep you and other people suffering because you don't want to come out of your condition. Who, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. So if you are dealing with church hurt, my God, allow God to penetrate that oh my god please allow god to penetrate that because somebody needs you my god don't be like the children of israel say let us die in egypt let us go back to egypt and be told what to do how to do it and when to do it quit letting the pain ah, that has happened to you control your whole destiny oh my god yes lord write this down just because you can't see the way doesn't mean that god doesn't have the way Whew, my god see they couldn't understand the israelites couldn't understand that god has a plan he already delivered them from the physical man. Now he's training them in the wilderness. See what I'm saying? But they couldn't see that God was taking them somewhere. See what I'm trying to say? Because they oppress her. They're a mindset. You got to get the mindset out. You got to get the mindset out of you. It's the mindset that's hindering you. It's the mindset that's keeping you from advancing. It's the mindset that's keeping you from growing. It's the mindset that we have is keeping us from being blessed. Ah, it's a mindset that's keeping us from saying it's good on this side, my God. God was trying to get to Egypt after a mentality because where he was taking them, oh, they couldn't bring Egypt to where God was taking them. Many of us has brought Egypt into the church. Mm. Oh, my God, that's why we as leaders got to be long-suffering with people and, oh, my God, and allow God to work it out. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, that's why you got to have a ministry pastors out there in place, my God, to disciple people. Because when people come into your church giving their life to Christ, you got to understand they got a lot of oppression. They got a lot of Egypt in them. They got a lot of not knowing how to operate as kingdom citizens in God's kingdom. And you got to have something in place to help them and teach them and train them how to walk in the kingdom. Oh, my God. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But just because you can't see the way doesn't mean that God doesn't have the way. Doing the wilderness, God will qualify you for your promise. The wilderness will prepare you for Canaan. Uh, while you're in the wilderness, God is qualifying you for freedom. That's why the Bible says everybody's mind that God could not change that he brought out of Egypt, he killed them in the Egypt, I mean the wilderness. Yo, the wilderness, ooh, pastor, qualifies you for freedom. Preparation in the wilderness prepared me for freedom in society. My wilderness, my God, was prison. 
See what I'm trying to say? So I prepared myself through taking classes. I gave my life to Christ and so forth. My God, now allow God to work on me, Pastor. I allow God to deal with me, my God, and put his hands on me, my God, while I was incarcerated. My God, because the wilderness, my God, was my preparation to learn how to shoulder the responsibility of freedom. My God, because if I would have came out of prison the same way I went in, I wouldn't have been able to manage freedom. See what I'm trying to say? And it's just been a matter of time before I found myself right back in bondage and my freedom, my God, take it from me and I'm right back in penitentiary. So the wilderness was preparation for me for freedom. For some of you right now, the wilderness experience, listen to me, y'all. My God, who, pastor, my God, oh, my God, what you've been through prepared you for what you got. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there, my God. You have to understand, my God, who, my God, that the wilderness is qualifying you for your freedom. It's qualifying you for your purpose. It's qualifying you for the plan. God is getting you ready for what he had for you. He can't give it to you on broken pieces. He can't give you your future. He can't give you the plan. He can't do that, my God, because you can't handle it, my God. You were squandered away. Oh, my God, so the very thing you're going through is qualifying you for the blessing. It's qualifying you for the breakthrough. It's qualifying you for the turnaround. It's preparing you, my God, for the increase. It's preparing you for the addition. Oh, my God, the wilderness is a qualifier. Who somebody give God a hand? Oh, my God. Mm, 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 mm. And phase three. Oh, I'm looking at the time. Oh, my God, you come from Egypt. You go through the wilderness, which is a qualifier. Oh, my God, then you enter into freedom. Oh, my God, which means Canaan. Canaan represents the promise, the dream, and the vision, the destiny. Promise, dream, vision, and destiny. Joshua chapter 5, verses 2 through 7, 2 to 7, 2 through 7 says, At that time, the Lord said to Joshua, Lord, I thank you, Holy Ghost, thank you. Oh, Pastor, I just had one in my whole, oh my God. Thank you for the wilderness. Ooh, thank you for the qualifier. Ah, oh, Lord, thank you for everything I have to go through, everything I will go through, Father God. All of this preparing me for my future, Lord. Oh, I submit, I surrender. Oh, my God, as I have this transferring, my God, transforming moment with you right now in the presence of thousands, Father God, I thank you for the wilderness. I thank you for the trials. I thank you for the situations and things I have to go through because all I know now, who thank you, Holy Ghost, that it is qualifying me, Lord, to possess the land. And so, God, I give you the glory. I repent for complaining. I repent for murmuring, Father God. Whatever I have to go through, let me go through it because it's a qualifier for where I'm going. I give you the glory, Father, in Jesus' precious name I pray. Mm. Oh my God, in Joshua chapter 5, 2 through 7, at that time the Lord said to Joshua, I'm coming in, y'all. Make flint knives and circumcise the Israelite men again. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the Israelite men at Gibbeth, Gibbeth Herloth. This is the reason Joshua circumcised them. All the people who came out of Egypt, who were males, all the men of war, had died in the wilderness along the way. They were circumcised, oh my God, along the way. They were circumcised after they had come out of Egypt. For the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until, until the nation... My God, the nation's men of war who came out of Egypt had died off because they did not obey the Lord, really because they didn't believe the Lord. So the Lord vowed never to let them see the land he had sworn to their ancestors to give them, a land flowing with milk and honey. He raised up their sons in their place. There's going to be some things you won't possess, but your children will if you stay planted. If you stay planted, my God, your children will reap the benefits of your labor. Oh, my God, the people that God brought out of Egypt, they didn't make it to Canaan, freedom. They died because of unbelief. But while they was in Egypt, I'm in the wilderness, my God, they was having children. So God said, you know what? Oh, my God, you never catch Christ slipping. My God, he said, you know what? While they're having these children, we're going to raise up their children. I'm going to take their children into the promised land because their children don't have Egypt in them. Oh, my God. Mm. Oh, I'm going to take you to a land flowing with milk and honey. He raised up their sons in their place. It was these Joshua circumcised, the children, your grandchildren. They were still uncircumcised since they had not been circumcised along the way. Circumcision is a type that depicts both a distinction and a departure. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my. Circumcised. Circumcision. My God. That's the clipping. And I'm careful because I'm on media. That's the clipping. And I'm going to leave it right there. Uh, that's the clipping. My God. Bring it up to our day and time. God has to circumcise our mind. Cut away Egypt. Cut away oppression. Cut away depression. Familiar verbiage around her. We need to go back to a circumcision. God, re-circumcise me. Cut me some more. Get the flint knife out. 
Cut out this murmuring. Cut out this complaining. Cut out these excuses, my God. Oh, my God, cut out all these distractions. Circumcise my mind again. Help me to believe again. Oh, my God, help me to have hope again, Lord. Help me to accept the plan and the purpose and the promises that you have for me, God. Oh, my God, we need to be circumcised, my God. The church has got out of rhythm. It's been awakening, my God. Wake up the church, Father God, is circumcised. Oh, my God, we got to get on a consecration and a fast to get back circumcised. Mm. Yes, Lord. It's also symbolic, my God, from the old way to the new lifestyle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until a person, watch this now, experience mental transformation. Until you experience it. Now we're in the promised land. We left Egypt. I didn't I didn't went hard with you in the wilderness, my God. And to make made you understand that the things you're going through is qualifying you for freedom. But until a person experienced mental transformation, they will not experience the fullness of their freedom, potential, and destiny. When a man is born again, the Spirit of God recreates his inner man and makes his home in him. So, my God, my God, who, my God, let me go back to that right there. My God, my God, until you have a mental transformation, you will not experience the freedom, the potential, and destiny that God has for you. So, what am I saying? You're saved, but you ain't transformed. Remember, freedom is right here. So, you saved, but you dominated, mastered, and controlled by everything that God delivered you from. You just ain't accepted the freedom. And so, my God, we're in the kingdom, Pastor. Oh, my God, we're in the kingdom. We didn't walk up out of Egypt. We're in the kingdom, my God, but we don't feel we're not free. We're not operating our purpose and our potential, my God. And we have, my God, just shown and turned our back on our destiny because we're not free mentally. Now, watch this, my God. The Spirit of God recreates his inner man, a person's inner man, and makes his home with him. Freedom in our mind and actions is left completely up to us. Oh, my God. So when you get saved, God, my God, recreates your spirit. But your actions and your conduct is up to you and I to be transformed by the renewing of the mind. So you do your part and God does his part. God saved your soul when you accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. But in order for your lifestyle to change, you got to allow the spirit of God. I mean, you got to, you got to do your part through reading the word and applying the word. That's why James said, don't be hearers, but doers of the word. See, many of us, my God, is saved. Watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Watch this. Ooh, April, watch this. Oh, deliverance don't mean freedom. The children of Israel was delivered, but they weren't free. Oh, my God. You, that's why people get out of prison. They delivered from prison, but they're not free. Because freedom has to do with the state of mind. Oh, who am I talking to out there? Many of us is delivered, but we're not free. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Oh, my God. Freedom in our mind and actions is left up to us, my God. And if you're frustrated because you're like, man, I keep falling. Man, I keep doing this and that, my God. Don't quit, but understand that the transformation of your conduct is left up to you and I. God has saved your spirit. He recreated your spirit. Your spirit is born again. That's why Paul said in Romans 12, 1 and 2, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Transform. Your mind controls your conduct. Your mind controls your actions. If you accept, my God, that you are free because of the finished works of Calvary and the atoning blood of our Lord and Savior, all you got to do is accept your freedom. There is no hang-ups. There is no habits. There is no oppressor. There is oppressor. There is no demon. There is no devil. Whatever you want to put on it, my God, that's strong enough, my God, than the blood. And all you got to do is walk at your freedom. Freedom from past relationships. Freedom from past bondages, I don't care what it is. Remember, we're talking about freedom. I purposely, in the spirit of the Lord, preached this sermon because I wanted you to understand what true freedom is all about. We are saved, but are we free? We living in the land of America where we're supposed to be free, but we bound up to everything. American people is the most bound up people in the world. We are dominated by the very things that Christ, my God, told us to dominate. Yes, we are. Think about that, Pastor. We live in the land of the free. Look how bound we are to pills and meth and drugs and sex and money and porn and social media and everything else under the sun. The very freedoms that God gave us to manage, my God, oh my God, is managing us. And so we in church jumping and shouting, but we're not free. We in this naming and claiming. I call those things that be not as though they are. Turn around seven times and get a car. And ain't nothing transformed. That's why the world is sitting back laughing at us, my God, because we jumping and shouting and speaking in tongues, but we're not free. Oh, my God, I'm just a preacher that will preach it. Oh, Lord, let me bring this thing in. The enemy of true freedom is a slave mentality. Write that down. Please, Pastor, the enemy, my God, of real freedom and true freedom is a slave mentality. Oh, oh that's so broad and I'm not going to mess with it because of time. 
but a slave mentality. You saved, Christians. Let me speak to my brothers and sisters out there all around the world. You are a Christian, born-again believer, Christ-like. Your spirit has been recreated. Now allow God to deliver you from a slave mentality so that your character can change, so that your integrity can increase, so that your actions, my God, will represent the king and his kingdom. Who am I talking to out there, my God? Get out the slave mentality. That's why you have to read your Bible. Many of us say, I don't have to go to church to be a Christian. Slave mentality. I don't have to read my Bible to be a Christian. Slave mentality. Because the only thing, Jakari, that would change our lifestyle, change our actions, April, change our conduct, my God, is the renewing of the world. I mean, of our mind through the reading of the word. That's what the book said. So how are you going to tell yourself that I ain't got to read? If you don't read, you don't transform. And that's why we have many Christians. My God, that's right. You are a Christian. My God, your soul has been recreated. Your spirit is alive, but your soul has not been recreated. That's why the Bible says you got to work out your mind, will, and emotions. Because you and I, this is heavy. I'm brand the clothes. We live for my soul. That's why your spirit comes alive. God takes care of the spirit. It's up to you and I to transform the soul, the mind, the will, and the emotions. That's why you got to get healthy in your emotions. My God, and usually the thoughts control the emotions. That's why you can be happy one day and sad the next because you don't have no control over your thoughts, which affects your emotions, which in turn affects your behavior. Oh my God, who am I talking to out there? We got to get free, American, we, Americans, and we got to get free, Christians, of the slave mentality. God has set you free. That's what was wrong with the church in the book of Exodus. They was free, but they had a slave mentality. See what I'm trying to say? Even though they was in the freedom. God said, I can't take you over to Egypt, I mean to the promised land, because you're going to bring and contaminate. You're going to contaminate. You're going to contaminate. You're going to contaminate. God would never allow us to become all we were born to be until we are sick of being what we are. You got to get tired of being what you are. You got to get sick and tired. Quit saying I'm, si I'm sick and tired. That's just an old cliche. Really mean that. When you really get sick and tired, you will say, God, break this slave mentality up off of me. Break this mediocre thinking up off of me. Break this spirit of fear up off of me. Break this low level of thinking. Break this chicken mentality up off of me. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. You'll never change until you really get sick and tired of being what you are. If you don't like it, you can fix it. God has already given you the authority to fix it. All you got to do is come to him. Mm -hmm. This requires that we hate our former lives. Whew, I'm coming in. Hate. Jesus said, love what I love and hate what I hate. I'm so glad I realized that the very thing that I was stood for was the very thing that was killing me. Let me say that again. The very thing, pastor, that I stood for, gang life, drug life, street life, so forth, when I came to my senses, when God saved me the second time in the wilderness, which is prison, I realized, Pastor, that the very thing that I was loyal to was the very thing that was killing me. Some of us need to get the personal revelation that the very people, the very places, and the very things that you are loyal to is the very thing that's killing your potential, killing your purpose, killing your happiness, killing your peace. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, my God, as you go in God, my God, everybody can't go. See what I'm trying to say? And so you have to get to the point where you hate your former life. That's right, strong word, hate your former life. I hate what I used to be. I hate what I used to do. Yes, Lord. And though I still stay in H. Deuce, <laughs> I still want my head cocked to the right. Y'all got to last some humor off now. I'm saying, but I hate the game banging life. I hate the drug addiction life. I can't stand it. And I'm going to keep it there because in the minute I start enjoying it again, I'm thinking about it again the minute I go back to it. Do you hate? your oppressor? Do you hate that what is tormenting you right now? Do you hate the very thing that's offending you? Do you hate the thing that's robbing you of peace? Do you hate the thing that's robbing you of your health? Do you hate diabetes and change your eating habit? Do you hate high blood pressure and exercise? What do you hate? Do you hate it enough to let it go? Because it's oppressing you. Who am Oh my God, if I was in church, who let me bring this thing? Nothing will change until your mind does. Nothing will change until your mind does. This is why God can't trust many of us with our dream. He has for us because our thinking is still in Egypt. God has a plan for you. He didn't show you, but he can't give it to you because you are squandered away because your mind is still in Egypt. In my conclusion, without mental transformation, the actions we take to change may only produce a new place where we continue to do old things. Oof. Without mental transformation, repentance, Change your mind, Alvin. Yeah, 
the actions we take to change may only produce a new place where we continue to do old things. That's why my God, as T.D. Jake say, you have some people that's 23 years old, been married three times already because they don't see covenant. Anytime they inconvenience in their relationship, they abort the relationship. See what I'm trying to say? They abort the relationship. Thinking that if I get another woman, things are going to be different. If I move from Tulsa and move to California, things are going to be different. I got the same drug habit. I got the same mindset. So if I move to L.A., then I won't do that again. Wherever you go, because whatever you focus on the longest becomes the strongest. And your mind attracts the very thing that you like. So whatever you like, that's what you're going to attract. Whatever you do, that's what you're going to attract. <laughs> oh, my God, I'm going to go home and close this thing down, my God. And so mental transformation, my God, is the only thing that's going to affect our actions. And like I stated, my God, oh, without a mental transformation, we may change demographics, we may change location, we may change. That's another problem. Many of you didn't change churches, but you ain't changed you. So you contaminate this one, now you're going to go contaminate another one. So we're just perpetuating contamination throughout the body of Christ, and the world is laughing because we have no power. Because anywhere there's darkness, anywhere, my God, there's contamination, it, 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 it deludes the power. It dilutes the power. See what I'm trying to say? Darkness dilutes the power. Oh, my God. See what I'm trying to say? So, yeah, 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 yeah. So it ain't about shifting demographics, not shifting churches, shifting husbands and wives and all that. All that don't matter. Without mental transformation, my God, you're going to do the same thing you did in the last two or three relationships. Write this down. What you feed your soul determines the quality of life and the degree of your freedom. What you feed your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotion, determines the quality of life and the degree of your freedom. If you do not feed yourself the word of God, look at me, y'all. As I'm close, I'm done. This right here is the most powerful book that you will ever open in your life. These words right here has so much authority. They are creative words. God said, let there be, and there it was. And after he created it, he named it. Oh, my God. He named it, my God. He named it. Then he created man and Adam and said, now all these animals that I created, now you name them. So God named, he spoke light into, into the earth, my God, and he named it light. He sent all the animals to know and say, name all the animals. This book right here is the number one key to mental reconditioning, mental transformation. I know, and I'm purposely passed about the spirit doing this because there's many say, man wrote this. This is the white man's book. Juju, you a pastor now, but you are in... You have a slave mentality because you're letting a white man who wrote the Bible and a white Jesus that you serve. Yep, I'm back there again. See, I have to deal with that type of stuff because this is the type of stuff as a pastor that I'm called to deal with. One of the things. This right here, my God, is the living word of God. It is the most powerful book that I ever read in my life. It is the one thing that has never forsaken me. Every promise those that's present past and those that will be in the future has been fulfilled in my life. When I look into the word of God and trace my life 25 years later after accepting Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, I can tell you that the word of God is true. I know in whom I believe and I know in what I believe. I'm telling you, the more you read this Bible, the more God will wash away your slave mentality. Until you and I allow the word of God to recondition our mind our actions and conduct will never change. And you will find yourself saved but depressed. You will find yourself saved but not free. You will find yourself in church, my God, but you don't live outside the church like you're a Christian because you don't have mental transformation. The only thing that can transform your mind completely and take you from captivity to real freedom where you will really be able to say it's good on this side is the living word of God. As I have taught y'all that going off of Christ Church, whatever you do, read your Bible daily. Many of us, my God, on this shutdown that we've been in, my God, it's time off or whatever we got going on in your life. This is time for you, my God, to get reacquainted with your word, reacquainted with prayer life, my God. Ooh, come on, somebody, because it's the only thing that's going to bring liberty, which is freedom to your mind is the word of God. You cannot transform. And that's why we have so many frustrated Christians in the body of Christ because ain't nobody allowing the word of God, pastor, to transform their lives.
And if you are reading your word and you are allowing the word of God to transform you, I give God the glory for you. But for those that need a little bit of encouragement, God wants what's best for you, and it is freedom. God wants you to dominate the earth. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to have good times while you are on earth. All you got to do is to give your life to Christ. Allow God to transform your mental condition and walk in your freedom because he's going to change your actions, which is going to bring freedom to your life. So, Father God, we thank you as we close. Mm. Lord, this is so loaded. Mm. I could have just dealt with one point. Lord, have mercy. <sighs> Lord, thank you for your people. I pray your people got this. I pray that you was effective through me, Father. Mm. It's like I was trying to put a cord in a pint, Father God. I pray, Father God, that somebody understands that there it is. I told them that you had a word for them, Father God, and I know you have spoke through me. Father God, I felt it in my spirit, Father God. Father God, thank you for recreating our spirits. Now, Father God, we submit and we surrender to the reconditioning of our minds, which consists of our soulish man, which is the mind, the will, and emotions. Father God, as I raise my right hand, Father God, I'm asking for you to come in and finish what you started. According to Philippians 1 and 6, he who begun, which is God, a good work in us, is able to complete it to the day of Jesus Christ's return. Father God, finish that which you have started in all of your sons and all of your spiritual daughters, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We desire real freedom. And we have just learned, Father God, that true freedom has to do with our mindset. We thank you, Father God, that you have put it in our hands. It's up to us, Father God, to be free. Our spirit is recreated, but our souls need to be changed. And Father God, we pray that you give us a hunger and a thirst for your word, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, forgive us for constantly wanting to go back to Egypt. Constantly, every time we face opposition. That's why the Bible says you took them the long way, because at the first sign of opposition, you knew that the Israelites would want to go back to Egypt. Father God, pity the man or woman, Father God, that's seen, that tells themselves that it's better for me to be in oppression. It's better for me to be in Egypt. It's better for me to be in captivity. It's better for me to be in prison because I don't have to be responsible. Father God, break that yoke off of them. Set them free. Father God, bring restoration between mother and daughter and son and father. Cover our marriages, Father God. Mm. Bring life and breathe life into our marriages, Father God. Help us, Father God, to recommit to our vows one to another, Father God. Change our mental condition concerning our spouses in the name of Jesus. Help us to see our spouses the way you see them. Help us to love them through Christ. Help us to forgive one another through Christ. Help us to let go, Father God, through Christ. Help us to release through Christ. Apart from you, we are nothing and we can do nothing according to your word. In you we live. In you we have our very being. We stand on your word. We stand on your promises. And we thank you, Father God, that this day we have learned some principles about real freedom. And we choose to walk in our freedom and walk out our freedom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let the church say amen. If this message, my God, has spoke to you, my God, and you are online with us, and even if you see this message after we go off the air, my God, please, if there's anything that I personally can do for you, please call 918-622-8300, my God. And if this message has been a blessing to you, please take it, those that are on social media, and share it. If there's anything that you know somebody in your family can benefit from this sermon, please take it and share it, my God. Not because I need the likes, my God, because I want you free, and I want you set free and delivered, my God. So if this was a blessing to you, we'd love to hear from you call in, write in, my God, or just reach out to us, my God, 918-622-8300. Thank you for joining Going Home for Christ here at 205 South Shirley. God bless you.